Good afternoon. We're going to start in about three minutes. This is Bill Gross. This is our weekly real estate investing Zoom, the LA County Real Estate Investors Association Club. We get together every Tuesday at 3 p.m. So we're going to start in just a few minutes. I Just a quick heads up, you know, I, I know people sign up on the meetup, but if you look at the invite, it says it's an online event. So uh, we live stream this uh, onto Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Uh, and so it's a chance. So if you have questions, I do watch the comments on the social media. So if you have questions or comments, put them there. Uh, if you want to just say hi, put your name, your number, what you do, what you're looking for, we'd love to have you there. So we're going to start in about three minutes. Uh, I'm Bill Gross. I'm your host. We're excited to have you guys here today. This is the website that. Too excited to kind of like, I see people already on the YouTube. Shout out to you guys. Early bird gets the worm. You know, this is real estate, it's a business. Uh, it's not a hobby. Um, you know, you can collect baseball cards, you can collect uh, matchbook cars, you can collect, uh, I guess, you know, tennis shoes, uh, basketball shoes. But real estate's a business. And, you know, 90% of business is showing up on time and prepared. And so those of you who are here ready to go, I appreciate you. Uh, and uh, that's what, you're why I do this. I do this, uh, we don't charge for this. Uh, I'm looking obviously to build my business, but um, uh, this is what I really enjoy doing. Okay, we're gonna start in about two minutes. And hope you guys are on. Again, if you're on the YouTube, I see we got people coming in already. Go ahead and put your name in the uh, comment section, name, phone number, or, or comment, or, uh, Tell us what you're looking for. Are you looking for investments? Are you looking for, um, uh, are you a professional in the business like I am? Uh, what are you doing? And love to make sure we can get you that. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I see we are live on YouTube. Feel free to jump in the chat and say hi. Jack Lapidus, how you doing? Jack Lapidus taking a break from uh, traveling through various sporting venues around the United States. Jack is a professional sports spectator. He really doesn't do much work. He just takes various family members and goes to basketball games, baseball games, football games, and uh, takes pictures and goes on Facebook. And so I get to live my life uh, fantasizing that I'd be Jack Lapidus' uh, son. Uh, I'm not, so I just got to watch him on Facebook. Hey, Jack, nice to see you. No, in reality, Jack is a uh, prominent local attorney. He's been a guest on the show. He's a real estate attorney. Oftentimes I get asked, do I know a real estate attorney? Jack is one. But, you know, real estate is a broad concept. Uh, and so uh, he really deals with disputes between neighbors, lot lines, and things like that. So, hey, Jack, you know, feel free to put your contact info in the chat box for people who want to reach out to you and talk to a real life real estate attorney if you want to. Okay, I think we'll get started. Hey, I'm Bill Gross. And um, I am the LA probate expert. Uh, you can find me on social media at Bill Gross Probate. Um, and Chuck says he doesn't do landlord tenant. This is our weekly call. We do this every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern. And we live stream it as well uh, to YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn. This is part of uh, Lloyd Siegel's Los Angeles County Real Estate Investor Association meeting. Uh, and then we have a live event. We get together about 250 people. The next one will be on, um, let me just jump through here real quick. August 10th, the week from Thursday, at the Iman Center, it's free. Love to have you come in uh, LA area, motor between, just south of the 10 freeway, uh, between Palms and National. And the speaker will be Seth Phillips, who will, uh, who will talk about uh, ADUs, or accessory dwelling units. He is a master in the subject. He jumped on this right when it became a big issue here in Southern California years ago. And so he did a great job and really has a great presentation on ways you can do that. So if you show up, there'll be about 250 people there. We have a vendor's expo, so get there. It's a free event next Thursday, August 10th. I'm a vendor. I also live stream it. Love to have you there, and thank you. Also, this Saturday, August 5th, Lloyd's having his famous foreclosure forum. It's $249 because if you've waited this long to pay for it, but you'll get a full day's training on foreclosures, how to buy them, how to get them, how to source them, what to do with them. Uh, that's the bolts where you get the data from. And so definitely a great program. I did this before it was on Saturdays years ago and definitely worth checking into. 
Okay, so all that said, we're excited to have here uh, a gentleman who I met. So this event we do is about real estate, almost always. And our, our guest today, I met him on a real estate uh, multifamily show. Um, and then he, I noticed he had this presentation he was doing on something that was an investment opportunity that wasn't real estate, but I found fascinating. He was a great presenter. So please welcome a friend of mine and a great resource for those of you looking for passive income, Jeff McKee out of Austin, Texas. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing? Good. How are you, Bill? Fantastic. Uh, give us a little background. How did you get into real estate investing? And then what brought you to our subject today, which is automated teller machines or ATM investing? Sure, sure. Uh, so I worked at Microsoft for 16 years. And uh, during my, the latter part of my career, uh, my wife's son and I got into a, a single family uh, group in Austin, Texas, you know, fix and flip, wholesaling, subject to um, uh, all that kind of stuff. The homestead strategy, we ended up tearing down a house and building two houses on that property in Austin, Texas. Then uh, during that year of single family, I was introduced to a multifamily and then uh, went to uh, some presentations up in Dallas. We ended up joining a, a mentoring group. So then we invested our money as limited partners to learn the ropes in five different deals, two in Dallas, three in San Antonio. Then uh, a few years later, we said, well, why don't we go bigger? So um, we stopped investing in single family. We shifted some of our passive investing in multifamily to active investing. So we became general partners. And over the last three plus years, general partners on 16 different apartment syndications from Arizona to Florida. And then I've retired from my W-2. My wife has retired from her W-2. And so we focus on real estate uh, investing uh, as well as alternative assets such as ATM, uh, oil and gas, and some raw land deals we've done. So this is a question I get asked a lot is how do I go from my W-2 to being a full-time investor? And Jeff has actually done that, right? And so uh, he has a story about that. We're not going to get into that today, though it's fascinating and exciting to see people make that transition. And so then uh, you went from real estate to other oil and gas. How did you find the automated teller? How did that opportunity come to you? So I'm a part of several masterminds. One of the masterminds um, is a guy named Kyle Wilson, who I've known for 20 years uh, back in Dallas. And then one of the other members of that group is a guy named Dave Zook. And Dave used to be in multifamily apartments up till 2019. Then he uh, he transitioned, but he started a fund in 2012 of an automatic teller machine fund. And so I've been watching that over time and talking with Dave. Uh, and we met again at the best ever real estate conference in February in, in Utah. Then um, I became an investor as a limited partner in that fund uh, over a year ago. And so then I saw that it has regular monthly distributions. They've never missed a distribution in this fund since 2012. So then I became a fund manager feeding into this master fund of an automatic teller machine. And so that's just a way for some people to have some reliable monthly income it's been you know the same amount depending on how much you invest uh you uh you get the same amount for seven years for 84 months and again they've never missed a payment to investors uh you know since they started it in 2012 um even during covid and so um so that's how i i got in i've looked in self storage uh, mobile home parks um you know all the different alternative assets strip centers convenience stores and uh, car washes. And I've settled on an automatic teller machine fund as a way people can potentially exit their, their W-2, their main job, um, and have reliable income. Or for people like me that have left the, the W-2 workforce and are looking for some, some regular monthly income. And so, uh, so that's how I entered into this automatic teller machine space. So first off, if you are uh, currently in a W-2 job looking to get out of that, uh, put me, or I went out of my debut too, put that in the chat box if you're watching this live on uh, YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, you know, part of any goal is declaring it to yourself and then declaring it publicly. And the sooner you make that commitment, the sooner you get out of it. If you're looking for more passive income, put more passive income in the chat box and then we'll all work together on getting some more passive income. Now I wanna give you a couple quick disclaimers. I don't get anything from Jeff. I don't charge for guests. 
I don't get a referral fee. I don't want a referral fee. Uh, I want to learn about real estate. I want to learn about investing. I want to network with people. I want to help my clientele learn how to be successful and make more money. And that's really all this is. So there's nothing. I want to just take that off the table. I'm not getting a commission. I'm making a referral fee, an affiliate, nothing. This is purely also I want to learn. I've learned that one way to vet investments is by inviting the presenters on my show and see how they handle themselves and decide if they make sense or not. So with that said, Jeff, let's walk through real quick. The Automated Teller Machine Passive Income Fund presentation uh, is what we're going to walk through here today. You, present, you kind of customize it for us, and I appreciate that with my picture and your, and your name and such and your contact info. Now, this is for accredited investors only, which means... Generally speaking, what? I'm not going to hold you, but generally, what does that mean? What are the numbers? Yeah, so to be an accredited investor in the United States, typically it's an individual that has made 200000 a year in gross income for the past two years and expects to make that going forward, or a married couple, it's 300000 together. That's one criteria. Uh, a second criteria is to have a net worth of $1 million or more, excluding the equity in your primary residence. That's the second one. And then the SEC, um, a year ago, they introduced a third one, which is uh, like FINRA for some Series 7, some, some different financial um, certifications. So for those people that are in the finance industry and the you know they're certified, even if they don't have the, the income requirement or the net worth, if they have certain credentials, then the SEC considers them accredited investors. So this is a, a 506C as in Charlie, and these are the, the ones that can be advertised. But again, it's only for accredited investors and it takes a third party letter from like a CPA, financial advisor, um, or there's other third party companies that will certify five people that they are indeed accredited. So that's one of the criteria for this fund. Now, there's no criteria to learn about this investment opportunity. And at some day, if you're not accredited now and you become accredited, you can step in and participate. So that's what we want to do is kind of create some education and some goals and then work together on getting there. And if you're already accredited, you can follow up with Jeff more you know, privately, but we're today going to do an overview on the opportunity. So let's talk about, of course, our disclaimers about uh, this is not uh, we're not pitching the product. This is for information only and education only. And again, if you want some uh, specific questions about your case, you should talk to appropriate professionals, accountants, attorneys, and such. And I'm just really presenting to Jeff, okay? And then this is the background on Jeff. I think we talked a little bit about that, about what he's done, where he came from as an apartment uh, unit general partner syndicate. That's where I met him was in that process. And I think you know a lot of people have noticed the margins are getting more difficult and the risks. And so, quite naturally, we've everybody looks as to what else can I do in the area to be successful. Uh, and I know you went to you have a BBA and an MBA from Baylor University. Correct. Yes. I've been yeah, there. I drove there. personally from LA to Waco, Texas, by myself without sleeping on the way, just for just as a, as a, a feat of human strength. Just FYI. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's a long drive. I was driving with somebody from Baylor. I remember when we crossed into the Texas state border from New Mexico, I said, great, we're in Texas, we're almost there. And he said, oh, no, 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 we're about halfway. And that's a long drive, just FYI. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And that's funny because uh, we just crossed uh, from New Mexico into the into Texas today, and I'm sitting in Paladura State Park just south of Amarillo, Texas, uh, using my Starlink from the state park. Well, now you're just bragging. Okay. So ATM investments, it's okay. It's a little spotty, actually. So if I jump in, just because you stop, and then I jump in, and then you continue. So we're going to do the best we can here. ATM investments, these are the highlights. Give us the highlights. Sure. So the main thing, it's a high cash on cash investment opportunity. Again, totally passive. You write one check, and you get 84 checks over the next you know, seven, seven years. So you get a monthly check um, based upon how much you invest in the fund. And so that's that's primarily the draw is a 24.9% cash on cash on your money. You basically get that money back in four years, excluding any depreciation benefits. And then the next three years after that is pure profit. Um, and so uh, it's about a like a 1.8x uh, return over a seven year period, but people do it because of the consistent high is 
you know, we're in 2023, we're going to 80% of bonus depreciation, which most people know what that is. And so if someone invests, let's say 104,000, they would get a K1 for roughly, you know, negative $82,000 for 2023, because these ATM machines are, uh, they count towards bonus depreciation. Um, and so that's a really good benefit. And then I've I mentioned before that this fund has never missed a, a distribution um, to an investor since it started in 2012. And so what you're really saying with the, with depreciation is if you were investing $100,000, you might think of it as you're buying one machine for 100000 or 10 machines for $10,000. Uh, but they, they actually cost less than that. They might cost, you, you're gonna, they might cost, uh, well, they might cost $100,000. But, you, but you're going to have the machine for the seven-year period but you get to write off the machine as though you 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 bought it in that current year. Normally, when we buy office supplies and things like that, those are expenses. Equipment normally is written off over the life of the equipment. But because of special tax laws were passed, you can write off 80% of the equipment in year one. And what that does is a couple things. One is it lowers your risk because if you invest 100,000, you get back an $80,000 deduction, in year one, it's going to lower your taxes by a bit. You've already gotten some of the benefit of your money back before you've turned a profit. Now, obviously, they're installing these machines. and uh, But I believe, as you explained to me, Jeff, most of these machines are going into locations. They're replacing other machines. So there's already, it's like a liquor store. There already has a machine. That one's old. They pull out the old one, put the new one in. There's already traffic. It's already has a proven market for that machine for the most part. Yes? exactly yeah these machines just have a seven year useful life and so the fund's been around since 2012 and so it's possible that there's some of those machines that are retiring and we basically scrap those machines so the 104,000 is the example that we use um uh and and that's about um five atm machines roughly um mm -hmm. but you're also buying into a pool so if one of those five hypothetically isn't performing you're actually buying into a pool of atms and once they get up and running and the surcharges get generated that's when the investor starts getting the return so it's a, a few months after the initial distribution we buy the atms secure the contracts deploy them and then they start generating surcharge revenue um, and then the other 20% of the depreciation gets spread out uh, among the next six years. So you do get 100% of the depreciation, right. but with bonus depreciation, you get it loaded up front. Right. You used to get you know one seventh a year for seven years to get the 100%, but in this case, you actually get 80% of year one. It was 100% last year, and 80% okay. is going to decline back towards a normal schedule. But that's exactly. fantastic. Okay. So who's the customer at these ATMs? I'm one because I like to tip people with cash. So I'm regularly going to the ATM and getting, but I realize the fees are so high now, I, I want to go less often, so I want to go in with more money. Uh, but really, who's the most typical customer at these? Yeah, so it's uh, the, the lower middle class. Some people um, uh, may not have a social security number, so they're not able to open up a bank account, and they use ATMs every week, every month to transact. <laughs> Um, so some people are able to get federal assistance on a debit card and you go to an ATM to withdraw money to pay for groceries, et cetera. Um, and, and like you said, I mean, there's casinos, CBD shops, you know, I've been traveling around the U S and it's just amazing how many small businesses only operate on cash and they have one or two ATMs, you know, in their store or around the corner and they generate a lot of fees. People are willing to pay a dollar, $2, $3 to take out, you know, 30, 50, a hundred dollars. And so, um, it's just a normal course of business. Now, now, also, small businesses are using them more to put in deposits during the day so it's less risk of being robbed because people basically can't break into an ATM machine. And so those high cash businesses want to make frequent deposits during the day into the ATM machine. Yeah, I see that. I see the ability to put bills in ATM. I was wondering, who's doing that? But I guess if yeah. you are a cash business, a restaurant or something, or a nail salon, you get a lot of cash. You don't want to get robbed, and one way to not get robbed is put the money in the bank. So, huh, interesting. Never, I, as a banker, I, I mean, as a customer, I've never done that, but I can imagine a cash business, that would be a, a great resource for them. Yeah, yeah. Restaurants, bars, CBD shops, a lot of those places are heavy cash, and they don't want to have it in their cash register. It's just too risky. And I don't see cash going away. I mean, I go to get my haircut. I know she prefers to get a cash tip, and I park my car. And they like there's nothing like giving cash to somebody when they park your car to get good service. Uh, so you're going in, going out. Bartenders. I just find that if I have cash, just seems to sing. Of course, you can always put it on your credit card, but 
personally, I find that that really works really well. Okay, so exactly. uh, is there any statistics on the usage overall of cash? I mean, is cash going away? Are we going to see because of Bitcoin or AT, uh, you know, credit cards? I don't see that happening personally. Yeah, no, it's been pretty consistent. You know, we've doubled the money supply in the last couple of years. The transactions in the U.S. have been averaging 17 to 20 million transactions a month, and that hasn't been dropping. So even with, you know, some Bitcoin, some cashless, uh, you know, there, there are people that never use an ATM. They don't own an ATM card or anything like that. But there is a, a one third segment of the population that uses them heavily. And we don't see that that going away, you know, anytime yeah. soon. Yeah. I would agree. So here's all the details with the numbers, and I don't know how much we really can get in on this. Maybe you can kind of hit the highlights. I can point to them, and uh, I, I don't know if you if you make this available to people who want the the presentation downloaded. We could put it in our description if it's okay with you, or if not, they can email you yeah. for it. However, that works. Sure. Yeah. Towards the end, I've got a URL where there's a very similar presentation with this slide. It doesn't have, you know, our, our opening slide, but it's got there's an ATM presentation, a recorded webinar I did with Dave Zook. So if we look to the right hand side, it might be the easiest way to explain it. So the minimum investment in this ATM fund is 52,000, but I use 104,000 just because a lot of uh, like real estate example syndications, we use 100,000. In this case, there it's in 52,000 increments. So 52,000, 104, 156. Um, that's just how the fund operates. It doesn't take like, oh, I have 75,000. So anyway, that's one of the nuances of an investment like this. But if someone invests 104,000, they would get $2,162 a month for 84 months. Um, and then obviously that first year they get a negative K1 of 80% of what they put in. And then they'll get some small um, K1s for the, the life of the um, of the investment. And so annually that's almost $26,000 that you get for seven years. And then um, the return is 181. Uh, so, so that's basically the, you know, 1.81 uh, uh, is the return on this. Um, and so you do get the 100% depreciation over the life. And then we're also not including any advertising fees that may come about. Um, so for example, you know, you might be near a subway and they'll say, oh, get a dollar off subway by using the ATM. We haven't factored any of that proximity marketing into it that that would be above and beyond that it could uh, increase the returns, but we're just leaving that out to be conservative. Now, the thing to know about this investment is you're buying a depreciating asset. And so that 104,000 is going down over time. So when the seven years is over, you're roughly going to get a net check for the residual value of those ATMs, which we expect to be $2,500 for every 104,000 invested. So basically they become worthless. We, we basically detrash those and we can't reuse those ATMs because of all the financial requirements. Um, we basically uh, just uh, get rid of them for scrap value. So that's one of the things about this investment. It's a high cash and it depreciates you know, over time. The money you're getting to return, is that the actual returns of the network? Is that a like a preferred investment return? And there's more if there's more than that at the end it's distributed or is that just the deal that you get and and the manager makes any additional profit it's typically the manager makes the additional profit so um the 2162 is consistent so even during covid when uh, some atms were used less we kept the same amount the 2162 was paid out and so then just the manager portfolio took a hit on the market on that side right. um and then the only other way i think that this would go up is if we had some advertising fees on some of those we just aren't projecting that right now it's possible in a seven-year period we right. would crank up the proximity marketing but for now um it would basically be the 2162 which would be the surcharge uh residual that goes to the the, the um uh the partner investors okay so hundred thousand hundred four thousand in uh, minimum is, is half of that, but 50, just for illustration, for 100,000, you get 2162 per month for 84 months, which is right. only $25,000. You're gonna get your money back in about four years and you're gonna have a nice $181,000 profit at the end. So the depreciation kind of gets recaptured at the end or how, I guess that would. No, this one, it. there's no recapture because it's an asset that is depreciating. There is no recapture of any of this dep uh, depreciation. Wow, nice. Yeah. So, okay, well, there you go. Nice tax benefit and some nice income returns. And so the um, uh, this is one of the top five ATM operators. So tell me, 
How big? Give me an idea. I mean, I, I know Chase, and Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. They all have ATM. Are those being operated by third parties, or are those operated by those banks? Yeah, those are typically third parties. So the company that that we work with that runs the show, that's the operator, is called Paramount. And there's a, a company, Prestige, is right in front of them. So Prestige and Paramount are the ones I work with on the whole thing. They're the ones negotiating contracts, like getting several thousand ATMs out of commission and putting new ones in and then managing that. They're also hiring the third party, um, uh, like Brinks and the, the the cash money. They've got the relationships with like U.S. Bank and the, the banks that actually have the cash and that deposit them in. So they run all the operations in the background. And so they, uh, uh, Paramount went from number five to number four. So the largest uh, in the U.S. Wow. Wow. And that's why when you see these things, they look like they're part of a big national network because they are, in fact, part of a big national network. Hey, if you're on the call, I find this fascinating. I hope you find it interesting. But feel free to ask questions. If you have a question, you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, put it in the chat box. Love to interact. If you have comments, if you don't like this topic, let me know. If you like this topic, want more these kinds of things, let me know. Uh, if Jeff is so good looking, he's distracting, let me know and I'll get somebody else. Um, okay, so next step. So if somebody who's interested, uh, this is appropriate for self-directed IRAs, 401ks, partnerships, trust funds. So this isn't appropriate, uh, to, uh, sounds to me, uh, at face value. And if somebody who's interested, they would reach out to you. Here's a link uh, that will have uh, the show notes. Uh, or you can call him, or I don't see an email, but uh, there you go. So McKeeCapitalGroup.com would be a place to go for that. What else? What other things do we need to know? Um, all the documents and, and you know stuff is sh you should review them in detail before we move forward. What else should somebody know who's interested in the in the program? Yeah, so uh, we use Syndication Pro as the software as a service in the cloud, just like I use on my real estate syndications. I'm using it on ATM. So um, it's hello sign technology. Everything is electronically signed uh, up in the cloud. Um, but then also with this, there is a third party accreditation. If someone doesn't have a CPA or a financial advisor, there's a, a template that's on my McKee Capital Group Open Investment. There's a template you can download. You can give it to your professional and then that's that's what you would upload to prove that you're accredited. But the other way is um, in the portal, it's called Parallel Markets. If a third party company, if someone wants to get uh, approved as accredited, let's say they make, you know, as an individual 250K a year, then that company would say, well, send me a couple of your pay stubs, send me your tax return for the last two years. Then they would certify that person as accredited. That way um, they can fill out the PPM and, uh, and get access to all that, that information. So you're not handling the information, the third party does that for you, and then they probably also service other investment syndicates and your, your uh, work can be uh, used in a couple different places. So you find Jeff's friends and Jeff's friends probably use the same portal, I would think. Yeah. Good, and then, so let's see here. Um, additional value propositions, you wanna kind of give us some highlights? Yeah, so this was, um, you know, uh, people were asking like in the frequently asked questions like, well, hey, you know, can you give me some examples of, uh, you know, the, the different people, how they use it? Um, so one of them is the consumer. So um, deposit services, we talked about that, like it's small business, but even individuals, you know, individuals may not want to carry around a lot of cash, right? And not everybody uses, you know, Venmo, PayPal, etc. There's a, a big cash society in the US. So, you know, that would be one deposits, uh, bill pay services, people actually can go and, and pay their bills um, through this. And also every time someone checks a balance, um, we earn 25 cents every time someone says, hey, what's my balance on the ATM? So there's other income like that that, that counts as surcharge income. But prepaid uh, and mobile top up services um, when people want to have, um, you know, different like even AT&T and different places, you know, when they look for debit cards, you can top up there. financial services for the unbanked and underbanked. So, again, some of the lower uh, middle class, you know, use ATMs quite extensively. Uh, money transfers um people actually you know transfer money to other countries and they're able to do this so there's the 14 to 18 million per month of transactions in the u.s that's been pretty consistent for the last several years um and then yeah uh you know some other customers will make cash deposits as well and then the management company so the operator significantly reduces um or eliminates the risk of uh, armored costs so for those convenience stores uh cbd shops um, small businesses they don't necessarily have to hire their own armored car to come a couple times a day they can just deposit to the atm it's much safer for the merchant um 
and then you know the cost of cash uh, from the merchant um this uh you know enables that for uh, the atm kiosk operator experience you know, two to six percent of volume by providing deposit and money transfer um so we're, we're seeing some uptick and operator allows some of the small retailers where they have an atm kiosk and they can uh, access for deposit services. So we're we're seeing more and more of that. Actually, uh, we're seeing some of uh, the usage continue to be very strong in the ATM space. You know, it's interesting that because um, I met you, I had a, a prospect uh, two years ago, who I was living at their house, uh, and their father owned uh, I want to say four or five. ATMs and that was his business was he serviced these ATMs and the son was telling me what a great business it was and how to work for him and like as we're talking the father comes home all distraught because somebody in their case had uh, destroyed or robbed or I'm not sure exactly what happened but he lost everything on this one machine the whole value and obviously the machine a new one's a hundred thousand dollars you know that's a big chunk there's cash in it at the time that was a loss in his case and so Owning a few would be a risky, it sounds great, but I can see the risk. Here you talk about this is a fund and they have great vendors and they, I mean, you know, it's like anything else. We do something well, you can get better people to help you in a better success. So a lot of that just makes sense to me. And then just overall, the business model that you uh, highlight, you gave us some, some talking points there as well. I want you to cover those real fast for us. Right, right. So, um, you know, recession, pandemic resistant asset classes, uh, the cash system is growing even, even though there's new mobile technologies, you know, Venmo, PayPal, um, Apple Pay, et cetera, increased ATM use based on the expected growth of the lower and the middle class. So we continue to see, you know, the population increase in the U.S. and we think the, the transactions are going to continue to increase for that population of, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the underbanked. Seems like seems like there's more people are coming to the United States who don't have money than uh, people who do, and um, that segment of our business is uh, uh, my my business as a real estate agent. That's true for sure. People inheriting houses who don't have any money at all and trying to manage through that. And here they probably bank it, your ATM service or or a competitor. So, right. um, okay. So I don't see any questions. If you're watching this live, love to have you put questions in the chat box about this or any other real estate related or investment related topics. Um, if you're watching on live stream on uh, YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, um, we do this call every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Uh, as part of the Los Angeles County Real Estate Investors Association. And like I said, I know it's a little bit off topic in terms of not being real estate specifically, but it kind of is on topic and that's passive income. And that's why most people get into real estate as a way to accumulate wealth and make more income. So Jeff, what is the... Uh, when, when people you know, uh, make the decision to try this for the first time, what is it that seems to get them to jump in? I'm sure like at all things, that people think about it, talk about it, look at it, research, and they call you out of the blue three months later, six months later, and say, okay, I'm ready to go. What seems to be the thing that kind of pushes people over the edge to get, to get involved with A-Team Investing? Yeah, I'd say the top two things. One are people like in my position that left a high paying W-2 job recently and want to have repeatable income because obviously the real estate passive income can be kind of lumpy, you know, with increase in interest rates, et cetera. So that's number one. The second one are there's so many people that want to leave their, their W-2 job sooner and they look at this as a bridge to get there like oh wow i could generate you know two three four thousand a month and and have that and that would help bridge me to leave sooner so those are the two main things that i've been talking to people and the people that have been investing is they've either left uh, in the last couple of years a high paying job or they're thinking of leaving in the next five to seven years maybe a year or two and the more they put in you know the more passive income that, that generates the other thing people do a ladder this say, oh, I'm going to do 52 this year, 52,000 next year. And then that starts stacking up to be very meaningful so that they can drive more passive income versus their expenses to reach that financial freedom number and not rely on that, that W-2 salaried uh, job. That's the goal. Get off that uh, treadmill and get to where you're living off of income that, um, from investments you made so you can afford to uh, add more to the pile. Uh, and get out of the rat race. If you use Rich Dad Poor Dad as the format, that's the, what, what we're all working on, towards or have achieved and are enjoying and adding to. 
So, um, Jeff, again, if someone wants to get a hold of you, uh, McKee fam oh, there we go. Uh, McKee Capital Oh, yeah, Group. Jeff at McKeeCapitalGroup.com or my 425-785-5751. But all the documents are on that McKee Capital Group slash, you know, open investments. If you go to McKeeCapitalGroup.com, you'll see a tab, open investment. Click on that. And it basically has a presentation like the one that you're looking at. It's got a recorded webinar with Dave Zook and I, um, and it has Q&A at the end. Uh, it's got an investment summary PDF of about 10 pages, again, with some written FAQs. Um, and then it's got that one downloadable letter template for an accredited investor on the bottom right. So that one, you can give it to your professional. Typically, it's a CPA. It could be a financial advisor. But if people don't have that in the portal, there is this parallel markets third party company that will verify your accreditation. So there's ways to get that um, that as well. Fantastic. Well, look, Joe, I really appreciate uh, I, we've done this individually, but I really wanted to share it with my customers, my colleagues, people in my uh, sphere of influence and our LA County Real Estate Investors Group. Really appreciate your time today and wish you continued success in your uh, investment journey and your, your path away from your W-2 days of past and forward into passive investing. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Bill. And I'll be in the LA area in October, so I'll give you some advance notice and see if we can get together. Love to. That sounds great. Jeff, thanks so much. And for the rest of you, uh, I'm Bill Cross. We do this every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Uh, this is the Real Estate Investing Zoom.com uh, or L A R E I C.com um, uh, official podcast. We get together every Tuesday at 3 p.m. We have a live event next Thursday, uh, which will be August 10th. Let me scroll to that. Uh, there we go. And guest speaker is Seth Phillips on making money with accessory dwelling units or ADUs. That's a free event. Get there at 6.30 and there's a vendors expo. We'll have about 50 vendors. I'll be one of them. And we'll have about 250 people in the program to learn about ADUs. And if you're also interested on Saturday, Foreclosure Forum with Lloyd Siegel, uh, that's all day learning $249 on foreclosure investing, how to be successful in that space. If I can help you, my contact info is down below or at Bill Gross Probate throughout social media. Thanks, everybody. And as always, make today your best day ever. Thanks so much.